Hey, man. Jeez, man, what's up with your voice? It's terrifying. Oh, just a winter cold. Don't worry about it. You just started a wedding videography business, didn't you? Yes, I did. Um, so I did a few weddings for some friends, and I made a website, and I put my work out there, and now I'm just waiting for my first couple to contact me. Dude, check your email. in midair. I'm just gonna go back to the desk and hope this works itself out. That was weird. Yeah, that was crazy. Alright, let's email this couple back. Alright. You have no idea what to do now, do you? I do not. Hello everybody, Jordan Nelson here. Thanks so much for watching my ridiculous intro, but it does set up today's video. So today we're gonna to talk about the booking and meeting process for couples who are wanting to have you as their wedding videographer. Like what questions do you need to ask the couple? What do you need to talk about with them? What needs to be included in the meeting? All that stuff. Now you might disagree with me on a lot of this stuff. You may have a different way that you wanna do it. Totally fine, this is just what's worked for me. So you can leave some comments down below if you have better ways to do it. Just let me have it in the comments. I'll be okay, I promise. But hopefully this can help you if you've never done something like this before. So for me, the couple typically reaches out through my website. They've already seen some of my work and they've seen the prices of the packages and what's included and all that. But typically by the time they even email me, they kind of know what package they want and what that's gonna look like. So sometimes they'll have questions for me right up front and then I can answer those right away or we can wait until the meeting, which we'll talk about later. So before we even really meet face to face, the couple typically already knows that they wanna book me because they know what I offer from my website, they know what my work looks like. I know this isn't always the case, I'm not saying this is always gonna happen, but for me, when we've gotten to the face to face meeting, they're usually ready to pay and sign the contract right there. That's what's typical for me. That's definitely not every case. So here's what the email communication typically looks like. The couple submits a form that includes each of the couple's names, email address, the type of request, so event, wedding, engagement, etc., location of the event, but we'll just call it a wedding for our purposes, the date of the wedding, who referred them, and a place for comments, questions, messages, things like that. Now usually they'll leave a little message like, oh, we love your work, we really hope that you're available for a wedding day. So if I am unavailable, I will just send an email back congratulating them that they are getting married and then saying, unfortunately, I am unavailable for your wedding date, but here are a couple recommendations I have for you. But if I am available for their wedding date, I reach back out congratulating them on their upcoming wedding. I ask if they have a specific package in mind that they were looking at. If they didn't already tell me in their initial email, a lot of times they'll just say like, oh, we really love your videos and we're looking at the super awesome package or whatever. And then if they have any additional questions. I then add that I would love to chat with them in person or via phone or FaceTime if they're too far away to talk about the video, expectations, details, all that. And then I add at the end, if they'd like to move forward once we meet to book their date, then I would need a signed contract and a 50% deposit. And then the couple will respond, maybe they'll have a couple questions, maybe not, but they'll tell me the specific package if they haven't already that they're looking into so I know ahead of time and that they would like to meet. Yes, we'd like to move forward. We don't have any additional questions right now. Let's, let's meet. And then I just say, awesome. We set up a time and place to meet and then we get into the meeting. All right, so now we're gonna go through how these meetings typically look, things you need to think about, things you need to ask about. So let's dive in. So ask about how the couple met, how they got engaged, where they work, just things about their lives. You don't need to get down to business right away. Of course, you do wanna be sensitive to their time. They don't wanna spend all night talking about their wedding video with you probably, but you wanna be personable and nice and take interest in their lives. That'll go a long way to help build trust in this relationship that you're building with them. Now, if you're married, it's a great idea to find some common ground with them because you've gone through this process before. This has actually been really helpful for me because it's helped me build a sense of trust because it seems like I know what I'm talking about. I've been married before. I've done the planning process before. I can empathize with what they're going through 
both in front of the camera and now behind the camera. So talk a little bit about your experience, things that are encouraging that will kind of comfort them in the really busy, hectic season. But don't talk too much about yourself. This meeting is not about you and reliving your wedding day, but it should be helpful for them. Just a little nugget that might build some trust between you and the couple. But remember, the meeting's about them and their wedding. So the next step is you're gonna to wanna to talk about the package or offering that they're interested in and what a typical wedding day looks like from your end. So I'll use an example that includes the most popular option people choose for me. So that's an extended highlight film and raw footage. So I'll explain to them that they'll be receiving an extended highlight video between six and 12 minutes long, similar to the ones that they've already watched on my website. I tell them kind of my heart behind the video too. I want to tell the story of the day. So for people who might not even be able to make it to the wedding, they can watch the film and feel like they were there. I love hearing those comments. It's like, I felt like I was there in person at your wedding because I watched this video. So I usually express that to them. So the video is not just a highlight film, it's gonna get little pieces, but it's an extended highlight. So it's really gonna give you the story and feel of the whole day. So I tell them there's no hour limit for me. If there is for you, just let them know what that looks like. For me, I get there in the getting ready portion of the day and I stay through 20 to 30 minutes of dancing or so, just enough to get what I need to get. So I don't want to force their hand and make them try to fit their day within my schedule, but I'm just gonna get whatever I know I need to get from my video. Now, as a solo wedding filmmaker, I do want to set the right expectations with them and let them know that I am by myself. I cannot get multiple angles of everything and I can't be in two places at once. So if they wanted a full ceremony edit, I'm probably not gonna be able to do that unless maybe they, I charge extra. They do another package where I have two cameras at the ceremony and then one the rest of the day. But if they're gonna choose this most popular package, I'm gonna be moving throughout the wedding ceremony. So when I give them the raw footage, it's not gonna be all cut together. It's just gonna be raw. I'm gonna be moving from place to place. So at least they'll have it. So just let them know I'm one person with one camera. I let them know the music will be licensed from epidemicsound.com. So I can't just do any famous song that they like that they wanna put in there because I do not have the right to use it in the video. I let them know I will provide raw footage of the ceremony, speeches, and first dances and then whatever other moments they want me to send them as well so like the first look or the cake cutting something like that that way on top of the highlight film they can just have raw clips that they can watch in their entirety so they're not all cut together with music over the top they can really just kind of watch how it happened I tell them that it'll be no longer than a month by the time they receive their film typically I get it done within a week but that's just in my contract. And I let them know that I would post this on YouTube and on my website and use it for promotional purposes. That's also in the contract. Just wanna make sure they understand that. So that's the overview of the package from my end, just explaining it to them. And I just follow up and ask, do you have any questions, concerns, other desires that you have before we move on? And even ask, is there anything that they've liked in the videos that they've seen of mine so far that they would like me to kind of replicate or any specific things that they know they like. So once we address those, I then have specific questions for them that I need to know. But I don't necessarily need to know the answer to all these questions now because we're usually meeting a good amount of time before the wedding even happens, nine months plus. So they probably don't even have a lot of answers to these questions, but I'm gonna ask them on the front end in case they do know. And if they don't, I can make a note of it. So when we do meet closer to the wedding or we touch base at least through email, I can get the answers to those questions and they know that I'm expecting those. I ask them if they have any type of rough itinerary at this point. Of course, I'm gonna need a more updated one closer to the wedding, so this isn't that important, but if they do, it's just helpful for me to have a game plan. Within the itinerary too, I would want specific times things are starting and then locations with addresses. So where the couples are getting ready, where the ceremony is, where the reception is, if they have specific photo locations that they've already chosen. I just want addresses and locations for those. Then ask if they will be getting ready in the same place or in different locations, maybe in a hotel, just different rooms, or if they're gonna be in two different houses, 20 minutes apart, because I need to know when I can get those getting ready shots for each of them. I ask if they have any specific genres of music that they like. Most of the time they just say, use stuff similar to the videos you've already done, we like that. But sometimes they'll usually tell me something they really don't want, like, I don't want any country type music in this, which I would never use anyways, but just ask and feel them out there. And then this is a really big one. Would they like audio over the top of their film? So rather than just a music video where they're gonna be clips and the music playing over the top, would they like spoken audio? And this can come in a couple different forms. So I can record the vows live during the ceremony by hooking the mic up to the groom. 
Now with this, I do want to ask if the groom is planning on wearing a jacket because if he's not, if he's just going to wear like a tie and then a button up, I need to figure out how I'm going to get the lav mic on him without, you know, the string hanging down. So just make sure you kind of know what that wardrobe situation is looking like so you're not getting there to the wedding, you have your mic and then you don't know how to mic the groom. So that's one option. I'll record the ceremony and play that over the top. And then I can also record personal messages that they've written to each other either beforehand so I can hook them up to the mic you know, while they're getting ready and they're reading notes to each other or during the ceremony if they have personal messages they're exchanging during the ceremony as well. So I'd use the groom um, to mic him up. And I can also shoot video of them when they're reading those notes or just play it over the top as audio. So I'd wanna give them that option as well if they prefer one or the other. If not, I'm just gonna do whichever one I feels best. I'll let them know at this point, I cannot record speeches, at least for the highlight film. I have my Rode VideoMic Pro, but it's not good enough audio quality for the speeches because you're further away, it's coming out of a speaker. I don't have any direct plug-in to the DJ's soundboard. So I let them know that I'm gonna give them that raw footage and they'll be able to hear it, but I'm not gonna put that audio in the extended highlight film. So then I asked them their preference between all those options, if they just want a music video or some kind of audio. And if they do not know, I will just touch base with them closer to the wedding. I could know it the day before and still be able to make it happen. I ask if there are any specific people that they want featured in the video, like grandparents or something like that. I can't shoot everyone and everything, so you gotta set expectations saying you can't just give me a long list of people you want in this video. But if there's a couple people that you want featured or items you want featured that are special to you, it's good to know that. I ask if they're doing some kind of exit after the reception. So if it's gonna be dark outside, really the only thing that works for me is doing a sparkler exit so if they're not doing one of those I'm not gonna stay and if they do I can make a decision whether I want to stay for that or not um, but it's good to know at least because those sparkler exits from the reception can look really really cool so um, I would usually want to take advantage of that and then after I ask all those specific questions I ask one more time do you have any questions yourself, does everything sound good? Would you like to move forward in booking me? So most of the time it is a yes, let's do this from the couple. So here is what I usually need from them. I need a signed contract. So that includes their contact info and the location of the ceremony and the reception. If they don't know that information, that's okay. A 50% deposit, contact info of the photographer, DJ, wedding planner if there is one whenever they do get all of that information if they don't have it at that point it's okay but i'll follow up to make sure that i get that info and then the wedding day itinerary so i want to make sure i get that when it's pretty much finalized so closer to the wedding so typically i get the contract and the deposit right there on the spot at the table so they sign it and they make a check out to me and we are booked so their date is reserved i will be doing their wedding i then tell them to reach out if they have any questions concerns desires anything i'm here to help and then a few weeks before the wedding i touch base with them either via email or phone call if that's easier for them just to make sure that i have everything i need that maybe i didn't get during the first meeting so the itinerary maybe some addresses contact info stuff like that and then the very last step is to make the sickest wedding video of your life Let's do this thing. Let's go have some fun. All right, thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you like this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more content like this on my channel, I have a playlist for wedding videography tutorials right up here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.